so <laughs> bad, like four times. Mute, mute, mute. And it still won't be muted. <laughs> Hello. Hi, everyone. Happy Monday. Yes. How is everyone? Has everyone's weather calmed down? Hi, Becky. Mm -hmm. Becky, I will be boxing up your stuff today, unless something unforeseen happens. I got almost all done with my shipping this weekend, and I ran out of bubble wrap last night. So there are four people who I did not invoice yet, one of whom did not send her info to me, and then three who I just, I did not get because I, I ran out of bubble wrap. And Becky, you're one of them. So look for your invoice later today. I mean, it ran out this morning and I got bell wrap. Good morning, Kathy. Well, afternoon, depending on where you are. Hi, Kaz. Oh, Kaz, your good morning. out this morning. My water is now safe. Oh. Yay! It happened, I think, mid last, mid last week. So, yay! A month later, my forever. water is safe. Yeah, it did take forever. Hi, Barbie. Hi guys. Yes. Well, hello, Happy hello, hello. Monday. Hello, Harry. How are you today? Hey, Harry. So oh. while people are filtering in, we are going to take it back to the basics and just give a no. review. So hi, Karen. Hi, Jazzia. Oh no, what did he have? I saw it was live, but I, I saw his face on Instagram. In yeah. What did he have an allergic reaction to? I don't I know one of his eyes, like, was, it looked like I thought somebody punched him <laughs> or he ran into something because oh, it was, no. it looked really not comfortable. Oh, that's yeah. terrible. Hi, Connie. So we're just going to go back to basics because we do have some new people coming in. And um, if you want to purchase an item, you, at this point in time, do not have to pre-register with us. But we just need to send you to send your info right after the sale. So um, you will email us with your info. And my middle name is C-A-Y-E. So sometimes I think people don't put that extra E in there or they switch it to a K instead of a C. So we need your, hey, Delbert, we need your YouTube name. We need your real name. We need your shipping address and we need your PayPal email. We both use Pirate Ship and we both use PayPal. Um, so if you have had any changes, so if you have changed your YouTube name, please update us. If yeah. you have moved, which I still updating people because I moved and then wasn't purchasing things for a while. And now I'm like, Oh my goodness, did I send my new address? So I'm still updating people because I had moved. So if you've moved or if you've changed your, your handle here on YouTube and it's different from what it used to be, please update it because we will miss that because we won't have that updated info. And we, if we don't know who you are, yeah. then we can't invoice you. So those are all of the basics. We always expect payment within 48 hours. You guys have been fantastic. Like I started oh, yeah. my packing and invoicing on Friday and was doing it through Saturday. And like I'd send the invoice and then ping, ping, people paid. So yeah. you guys have been awesome about that. Oh, thanks. It's still, I need to get a haircut. It's still growing out. I'm trying to tame it, but thank you, Karen. So I ship from Ohio and Nikki ships from New York. Is that all the basics? Did I forget anything? That's pretty. And if for any reason you don't think or you're not sure, send us your info. We don't get mad. Yeah. We don't get mad. If, if yep. in doubt, send it again. And that's absolutely yeah. fine. And I had somebody purchase last week who sent me her info and said, hey, I haven't purchased in a while. So I thought I would just update my info with you. She'd never purchased from me. We just knew each other from the chats. So thank yeah. goodness she sent me her info. So I was able to invoice her. But and listen, we all do it. Sing. Yeah, we all we forget. We do. We all forget yeah. and goof. <laughs> yeah, I'm still yeah. missing somebody's info. And I have a feeling she probably sent it and just got this wrong. Yeah. That's what I think. I don't think it was somebody purposely not sending it. I think it just. And me personally, if you send me an info. 
if you send me a, anything in any kind of information, I will always acknowledge it with a quick thank you or something like that. Just so you know, I got it. Oh, see, I'm really bad like that. I need to start doing that. So I will yeah, start. Yeah, I, I do that immediately. That way people know I'm acknowledging. Yeah. 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 So also next week will be our info question um, last week class. So if you have questions, make sure you get them to us. I've got some saved that people have sent me. So we have some things to be talking about. But any glass question, if it's about a glass company, if it's about a glass pattern, if it's Whatever you can send us pictures. You can email us pictures yeah. or Instagram messages picker, pictures and we'll we'll do our best. We are not experts, no. but we like to research. So yeah. if you get it to us ahead of time, then we can take a look at that. Yep. And that's that's the housekeeping. That's pretty much that's the good that we're good housekeeping. <laughs> I haven't good. done it in a while, so I figured it was yeah. time to say all of the things again. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to us. If you need Nikki's info, all of her social media is linked in the box below. So her whatnot, her YouTube, and her Instagram, they're all linked below. Awesome. So I think that's everything we are going to talk about. Nikki's going to cover Cambridge glass. Is it Cambridge? Yeah. And then I'm going to talk about the main differences between elegant glassware and just plain depression glassware. So I will stick Nikki okay. up here first. There Hello, you go, everyone. So Cambridge glass is not something that I ever thought I would be interested in. But after looking it up, yeah, after looking it up, I am floored, stunned, and I want a few pieces, one or two pieces, totally in particular. So we'll start with the beginning. Cambridge glass did not have a long run. Now, it depends on how and when you're going to say Cambridge glass technically started. So in 1873, a bunch of dudes got together and said, let's start a company. That went nowhere. It sat on the shelf. They had the property. It sat on the shelf. They did absolutely nothing with it. So then at the turn of the century, so we're talking some 20 years later, in the early 1900s, they sell off their idea to the National Glass Company, which was a big monopoly back then. We've talked about National Glass before. Um, but they then hired this guy called Hi, Arthur. Hi, thank you for saying it. Hi, sweetie. That's my baby boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, am I fuzzy? I'm sorry. Oh, I am fuzzy. What the heck? Sorry about that. Maybe it'll clear up in a tick. Okay, hopefully it does. Sorry, I'm fuzzy. So they hired this guy, Arthur J. Bennett, who was a very well-known importer at the time of fine china and glass. Oh, I'm so fuzzy. So he becomes the major stockholder. And at this point in time, National Glass has very little, if anything, to do with Cambridge. As a matter of fact, shortly after they purchased Cambridge, they shut down and sold off their pieces and sold off the pieces of their companies. And some survived and some didn't. And Cambridge survived. Thank you, Cambridge survived. So in 1904, technically the first piece of Cambridge was struck. So you have three dates for when Cambridge started, 1873, 1902, and 1904. I'm going to count 1904 when they first did their first piece of glass on their own. And it was a pitcher. It was a pitcher. They always are, aren't they? The line was called radium. That was the first line they introduced. And they introduced at the same time their first trademark. So the trademark is the little bit that's usually on the bottom, whether it's a uh, sticker or it's uh, impressed or stamped on the base or somewhere on the glass. That's what a trademark is. So their trademark, the first one, the top line said near and the bottom line said cut. So it said near cut. So that trademark stayed in operation from 1904 to 1920. So if you have a piece of glass that says near cut on the bottom of it, it is an antique. It is an antique piece of Cambridge glass. So good That's little good. piece of information to know, yes. So they used that mark, and predominantly they sold tableware to the mid and high end market. Now that is it. That they even sold to jewelry stores, which I'm not quite sure what jewelry stores were doing with glass. Maybe somebody can explain that part to me. I don't know. 
So in 1907, Bennett buys the company out completely and designs almost all of the pieces. Now, this is one of the only times I've seen this when researching a glass company. In 1910, they start mining their own coal. That's a really weird thing for a glass wow. company to do is to mine their own coal. But fuel was fuel was everything back then to keep the furnaces running. That's why a lot of the places ended up in West Virginia and Ohio and even some in Indiana because of the coal and natural gas uh, situations that were high there. Okay, so I thought that was weird. Also in 1910, they purchased the Byesville Glass and Lamp Company, which they retained for a short period of time. Now, their early popular patterns were Betty and Marjorie, both of which were named after Arthur Bennett's family members, Marjorie being his daughter. And by 1917, they sell off the Byville Company. So they didn't own it for very long, seven short years. Now, the heyday for Cambridge Glass is the 1930s, which sounds really weird to say because that's the Depression era. How could a high-end glass company be doing so well? Well, they had, at this point in time, they had 5,000 molds. They'd only been in operation for less than 30 years, and they had 5,000 molds. That's a lot. That's a, a ridiculous amount. They were prolific with colors. Because there was starting to be a shift at the end of the 20s. Everything was kind of shifting away from this heavy, chunky, like ornate glass and was going into finer, more elegant tableware. So back in the day, if you showed up to a nice little soiree in the 30s, you could almost be guaranteed that the table setting was all Cambridge. That's how pretty this stuff was. And their colors were unusually named. Carmen, that was their red color. Royal blue. Crown Tuscan, which I'm going to guess was kind of an ambery color. Heather blue, forest green, and a lot of times they would overlay their colors with silver or gold. Now, in 1931, they introduced their rose point, which was their most popular pattern. It is an extra pattern, most popular pattern, and their nude stems appear. I want a nude stem glass so much. <laughs> they came in clear. Usually the, the, little, the little figured ladies were, were in the buff. And they would make up the stem. And then the top of the glass would either be clear and some of them are colored. I want a colored one, of course, but I'll take a clear one. I'm not going to be picky. In 1940, Bennett dies. This is when the company starts to go downhill. So he's replaced by his son-in-law, Wilbur Orm, who struggles financially during World War II and only produces one more really good line that comes out that can be considered mid-century. And that is their square pattern. So here, I'll show you a picture. So it looks just like you think. Square on the bottom, around everywhere else. It's neat. It's simple. They only did this in like two colors. They did it in a, a, a dark color and then in this off color. This It's not quite clear. It's kind of a smoky color. But I mean, they're just really simple, elegant lines. This won tons of awards and made them very, very, very popular. So... After that, they sold off. They sold off in 1954. They closed their doors. And in 1955, another guy comes in and buys it, Sidney Albert of Akron, Ohio. He buys the company just to sell it off a year later. And he sells it to Morrison Industries in Boston, who finally closed down the doors in 1958. Now, in 1958, the molds and equipment are sold off. Now, here's where things get really weird for collectors out there of Cambridge glass. They sold off the molds to Imperial, Fenton, Sar Art Glass, and some private collectors, some of them managed to hold on to that. Now, Fenton altered the molds just slightly, so they kind of made them their own, but then confused the crap out of collectors who went, well, wait a minute, that looks like a Cambridge piece that I already have. Summit changed the colors, but didn't change the molds, so then confused even more people going, well, wait a minute, that's a piece of Cambridge glass, but it's not in the right color. And then Imperial did something completely different. What they did is they sold the exact color and mold of the pieces, but they did a line called Imperial or Cambridge by Imperial, and it was on a sticker. That's how they sold the stuff off. So, I mean, Imperial tried to stay kind of true, but eh, it created a lot of confusion. Later in, 19, in 1984, sorry, the National Cambridge Collectors Association, it's a very long word, uh, bought back most of the molds, and especially the Imperial molds, because that's when Imperial kind of went defunct. So there, there is a huge collection society out there. Uh, Cambridge is a gorgeous museum with tons of pictures. Their uh, collectors group has done a very good job of maintaining the integrity of uh 
of Cambridge and showing off the pieces. So what are some of the rare and oh, the, uh, the Cambridge mark we all know is a triangle like this and then it has a C in the center. That mark was used from 1920 to 1954. So they had two marks, just so everybody knows. So their popular etched patterns, because they did a lot of etched wear, was Apple Blossom, Rose Point. And Rose Point, like I said, was the most popular. It came in ebony, amber, green, carmine, and most of it was either trimmed in gold and silver. Not all of it, but some of it. Chantilly and Portia and Wildflower were their other popular etched patterns. Their pressed or non-etched pieces that were really popular, Tally Ho. Tally, I love that one. Tally Ho. <laughs> it was a, mainly it was a punch bowl with, with glasses. That's what the Tally Ho was seen in mainly. And the Nautilus, where they're more geometric art deco lines. Then you have Caprice, which is gorgeous. I love the Caprice. It's, uh, I've only seen in the moonlight color, but I'm sure there are other colors that are out there. The round, which is exactly what it sounds like. It's a round piece. Martha Washington, which is probably one of their most um, detailed pieces of press. The pedestal is, is all very ornate. The piece of glass itself is all very ornate. The handles on the pieces have these little bead, these big little like bead edges. It's really pretty. The biggest bolo, if you find it in Cambridge glass, they have four toed, so they look like lion's paws, bases, uh, teacups. So they have teacups and bowls. I only saw a picture of a bowl and could not find a picture online of the teacup. So they have little baby feet. So if you see one that has little baby paw feet on the bottom, pick it up. There are collectors out there who are willing to pay big bucks for that. That's pretty much my Cambridge lesson. Cambridge had some really cool pieces. Claudia will show you some pretty pictures. Hi, Kendra. Yeah, because I have the yeah. Alien Glassware, the Depression Era book. So let me show you. Here is the Apple Blossom. Oh, love it. Love it. And this came in blue, pink, light and dark green, yellow, crystal, and amber. It always kills me how many shades of green these companies did. I know. So here's the Caprice that Nikki was talking about. I love it. And hi, Kendra. Sorry, I missed you coming in. Look how many different colors it came in. Oh, so you did. I like the moonlight color. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I, I like that one. So that one. And do you see the silver overlay? Oh, there yeah. On the picture. And then this piece <laughs> back here. Has it. Okay. And here is Hi. this one, which is deceptively simple. It's their Decagon. Oh, yes. Yes. So deceptively simple, but stunning. Lots of different colors there. This one, the Diane. It's very ornate. Ooh. Oh. And then I picked the Mount Vernon because, as we've learned, a ton of different companies had a Mount Vernon. Hey, Larry. Had a Mount Vernon line. And they did this one in a lot of different colors. And then last, I will show you the Rose Point, which just, it looks like lace. It is yeah. really, really stunning. The Chantilly looks just like lace too. They're both very stunning. So there's some pictures of Cambridge glass to give you an idea. Now, what is the difference? And we've touched on it a bit here and there, but what is the difference between elegant glass versus Depression glass, they were both made at the same time. So we talked about this before. There were extra finishing steps to elegant glassware. So elegant glass is going to be high quality versus depression glass is going to have bubbles. It's going to have straw marks. It's going to have, you know, just different kinds of marks in it. It was produced cheaply, quickly. And a lot of times it was given away in your cereal box. Mm -hmm. Elegant glassware, never, ever given away. You could not collect elegant glassware through buying things at your um, gas station or your grocery store like you could depression glass. So those are two big differences. Now we say depression glass, but a lot of times 
these companies are from the 1920s through the 1950s. This is the span that we're talking about when we're talking about depression glass. So a lot of these elegant glassware companies became popular around then and then closed in the 1950s because they could not move with the times. They were not able to change to the bold colors. They Their gas supply lines had run out. There were a lot of different issues why in the 1950s some of these companies went under. The ones that were able to change with the times were popular and stayed you know, in business through the 80s. So um, elegant glassware is going to be at least partially handmade. It's going to have a cleaner finish, more vibrant colors. Uh, press elegant glass was fire polished. So there's one of your extra steps that depression glass didn't get. If it had straw marks or raised seams, they were going to be filed down and removed. The base of the bowl or the platter would be ground off. So sometimes you'll get what looks like, um, it looks like a rough edge on the bottom. It's not it's completely smooth. It sits level, but that, that it was ground so that it would sit level. Um, they were embellished with acid etching, with cutting, with enamel decoration, with gold, platinum, silver. So they had all these extra steps that were taken. Um, the companies were, now here's what's interesting because some of these companies also produce depression glass. Yeah. Sometimes using the same molds. So they would produce the exact same glass and half of it would go with straw marks and imperfections would go out to the grocery stores and the gas stations where you could be collecting your collection and the other half would get the fire polishing, would get the inlaid gold, would get a, but it was the same mold. Imperial did this. So the elegant glassware companies that we consider to be elegant glassware, but some of them also did produce depression wear, Cambridge, Central, Consolidated, Diamond, Duncan and Miller, Fenton, Fostoria, Heise, Imperial, Morgantown, New Martinsville, Payton City, Fairpoint, and Tiffin. Some of the depression glass companies who did not produce elegant glassware, Jeanette, Macbeth Evans, Anchor Hawking, Hazel Atlas, Indiana, U.S. Glass, Federal Glass. So, um, oh, Larry loves the rose point. So it it's going to be a better glass. So I brought two sugar bowls out of my um, collection to show you the difference. So this is going to be... And I don't know if you can see how the glass is cloudier. It's got marks in it. There was a- It's chunkier too. You're not gonna be able to see it, but it looks like a thumbprint right here. It's It was just where the glass pulled in the thing. And then it's got raised seams here. You can feel the seams. So this would have been true depression glass. Maybe it was given away at the gas station. And then, and both of these are uranium glass. And then this one, the glass is much clearer. There's no imperfections in the glass. It's got this silver overlay. It's completely polished. There's no, um, there's no seam marks. The handles look like they were applied. So elegant glassware versus depression wear. And depression wear was meant to be used every single day elegant glassware was put up and brought out for company yeah it was not something that you used every day and it was marketed um, because china could not be imported so young couples getting married would normally be able to get china to start their home with so elegant glassware was marketed in whole sets to replace the china that we could not import at the time so I think that's everything. Yeah, that's good. I don't have any questions about that. Elegant glassware, when you put it next to, and that was a great example, you can see it almost instantaneously, the, the difference between, yeah. between the, you can feel the difference too, because it feels like a fancy piece of glass that I shouldn't be touching because mm -hmm. yeah. I might drop it. 
Okay, should we kick off the sale? Okay, I will go first then. All right, so my first couple of rounds, I've put together pieces of things so that you guys can either start a collection or you can have pieces that kind of go together. And I have quite a few pieces of different elegant uh, glassware. But the first one is not elegant glassware. What I'm going to show you, I've shown before, but I've added something to it. So I have this, let me pop this up. I have this lovely piece of milk glass. I love this piece. It's like a half an egg. That's kind of what how I look at it. It's like a half an egg. The it is not marked. It has a texture that doesn't show up on the camera, unfortunately. Orange peel almost feel to it. You're still now, really fuzzy, so you need oh to hold really still. All right. <laughs> there we go. Really still. I wasn't fuzzy now. I'm fuzzy again. Oh, good Lord. My water gets better. My internet goes down. <laughs> you got to love it. So that piece has an incredible ring of fire. And since I'm fuzzy, I don't know if I'm going to get it to show up, but it has a fantastic ring of fire. Then to go with it, I found... A flower frog, just a simple little glass flower frog. This is a bigger one. It's five inches in diameter there. There are a few little issues underneath. There's like some little dings and stuff, but they're all very soft on the underside here, on the flat side. And why I pair these two together, let me put them back together here. Yeah, I saw one, the picture. I was like, oh my goodness, that fits it perfectly. It's one fits perfect inside the other. I love it. And just leaving it out, I was just, the sun's finally coming through my window. The ring of fire kind of highlights, you can just see a little bit of it right here. Highlights hi, into, oh, hi guys. Highlights into the clear glass inside. So this as a window piece would be fabulous. So we got five inches on the flower frog. I'm pairing the two together because you can make a really pretty flower arrangement with this. It's what this piece was originally intended for. And if you are interested in the duo set, it's going to be $16, number 91. $16, number 91. And I'm really sorry. I'm fuzzy again, guys. I'm sorry. It got better than it went away. All right. Now, going on to my depression glass, I have two pieces from the same pattern in the same color. So I have the big, and this is a large serving bowl in the amber. I'm going to make y'all see sick now. My measure mirror is over here. I believe this is nine inches. Yep. Nine and a half inches across. So this is a perfect salad bowl, chip bowl, pasta salad bowl. I love the Madrid pattern. It is one of my favorites. I'm trying to find it in clear because I have all the bowls. And I like it because it's a different style. It's got the squared off edges. This was made by the Jeanette company. At least I'm pretty sure it was. And then to go with it, I have the dinner plate. The Madrid in the yellow or the amber dinner plate in great condition. So what I thought was we got one that can go right on top of the other. So you can bring them out together so you have a fun little set. So I'm trying to try something a little different here. So if you're interested in the duo set, the serving bowl, and this is technically a dinner plate, but the bowl and the plate actually kind of work together. If you're interested in the depression glass set, it's going to be $15 for the set, number 78. $15, number 78 on that one. And those are my two. Sorry for the fun. Ooh, I am trying not to sneeze, you guys. Oh, spring allergies. Bless came you. <laughs> okay. I'm going to take it straight to the 1960s. I have got one of the spaghetti string pitchers. Oh, nice. I never find these around here unless they're in antique stores and they're hugely expensive. So the pitcher is in great shape. There's just a little bit of wear right here, but it's not, there's no rough spots. It just, I think it was used a lot. Here's the inside. It's the green I hope it's coming across. Oh, yeah. Oh. And this one is to the top of the ice slip, nine inches. So this is not the juice pitcher. This is the regular pitcher. And the handle, at first I thought the handle had some damage. When I looked them up, 
it looks like the handle looks like this on all of them. So I thought that was super cool. I've got one tiny little roly poly cup in my personal collection that I had found in the candle section of a thrift store one time. But the picture is awesome. $20 number three. $20 number three for the spaghetti string pitcher. And then this, I picked this up and I'm like, what is this? Because it looks like the Libby pattern of cups and pitchers. And, you know, my grandma had the juice glasses that went with this set. And I'm like, but... It's got the, oh, thanks, Larry. Let me write that down before I move on. On the bottom, it's got the, um, the federal law forbids the resale. I'm like, they only put that on alcohol bottles. So yeah. what is this? So I, I picked it up and I brought it home and I did some research. This was a vodka bottle from the 1960s. That's so cool. It's Aero Vodka. That is so <laughs> cool. My mom's like, why are you bringing vodka bottles home? So she sniffs it. And I, it doesn't smell like anything. But here's the plastic lid. It would have had more of the gold around here. It's obviously worn off. But nice and clean on the inside. It does have some wear to the gold, just like most of the glasses do. The bottom part's pretty good. Just the lines here. Have a little bit of wear and it stands 12 inches 12 inches tall it's an the brand was aero vodka is from the 1960s it was made to match the Gib libby gold leaf pattern it is going to be 15 dollars number 11. hey becky and if i missed you coming in hello and welcome thanks for being here I don't know. I think I look frozen on the screen. I don't know. I might still be. Sorry, guys. Okay. So now this is my elegant depression set around here. Ooh, Thank you, Donna. Awesome. Oh, that's cool. Okay. So up first here, I've got a set of two pink depression glass color elegant glassware sets. So the first one here, oh my gosh, why am I fuzzy? I might have to go out and come back in after this round. See if that helps. Yeah. This is a piece of Heise glass. It has the Heise H right here in the center. It does have two little scratch marks on the center there, but it's a smaller piece. Um, so it is five, almost six inches. Almost six inches, and I'm really sorry, guys. After this, I will pop out and pop back in and see if that makes a difference. So that's the first piece of pink depression or pink elegant wear out of Heise. And then this is the Faustoria Fairfax in the pink. This is their bonbon dish. I love the handles. I'm trying to move really slow. I love these handles. Both sides, perfect condition. This is no scratches. And you can kind of see, if I wasn't fuzzy, you'd be able to see there's no seams. It's super high polished. It's so polished, it almost looks clear, but it is a pink color. So this guy here measures about seven inches, seven inches across. So two of the Elegant Wear Depression pieces made in the 30s there. And if you're interested in those pieces, it'll be $12, number 85. $12, number 85 for the poor pink depression glass. Yeah, I know. I know. I'm going to pop out and pop back in if I put the internet down. I was just trying to help out. If I put the internet down, though, you probably won't come in for a while. This is true. Okay, and then up next, I have my two pieces of clear uh, elegant wear glass. I saw a lovely post today on Instagram of somebody who had mixed in their clear pieces with their greenery and their houseplants, and I could not believe how much I loved that look. So, first one here, another piece of Heise. This is Heise Lariat. It is a divided dish, whether you want to call it a relish dish or a nut dish or a candy dish. It's up to you. 
I love the little swoop that's not completely straight, that it's just a little abstract there. Really good condition on the Lariat piece. Once again, like I said, this is Heisey. And then to go along with that, I've got the Duncan Miller. Oh, beaded edge, I believe this is called. I could be wrong. But what I love is this fit right here in the back. It almost looks like glitter strips when done all right. This one also is in really good condition. Another real cute little serving bowl, candy dish bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's not wrong. <laughs> so both of them together. So you get both pieces together to start you off in your elegant glassware uh, adventure. And if you're interested in that, it's going to be $15, number 93 for the set. $15, number 93. And those are my two. I'm going to leave and come back and okay. hopefully things work better. And I wish you guys could see how clear the glass is on both the pink and the clear that she showed. Because it is such a good example of elegant glassware and how, how gorgeous and beautiful it is. Okay, so I am, if you saw my video with all of this stuff back here, I pulled those up here today and I'm going to show you all of those clear candy dishes just to give you, and now I'm fuzzy. Uh, I've got Spectrum too. So I wanted to give you guys a close up on them. So I pulled a bunch of those. I'm fuzzy now. <laughs> you have the you gonna, have spectrum. <laughs> I'm going to move slowly. So my first one, I couldn't identify the company. This is a crystal candle dish. So it's got or candy dish. So it's got a really nice ring when you ding it. And this is the one that does not have any um chips or cracks let me show it to you so it's got the satin accents in here it's really pretty there oh that is pretty and then here is the candy dish it's got little feet little scroll feet and it had i don't know if it'll ding but yeah, so it's got really pretty, really pretty ding to it. And I found the lid in a separate spot from the dish. But I did find the whole thing. I, I got this at Betty Slee Market. So this one, even though I, I couldn't identify the company, it is crystal. It is beautiful. $15, number 12. $15, number 12 on that one. And my mom loves these clear pieces with satin accents, but she has too many candy dishes. And then I've got, oh, it's back here. This is a Hazel Atlas. Now this one has a big old ding on it. I'm just going to tell you that right up. It has tiny, tiny little feet, not scroll feet, just tiny feet. And I don't know if you can see the difference if it comes across. But here's the clarity on the crystal one. Here's your Hazel Atlas glass. The thing I liked about this was the fun shape, the fun triangle shape. But it has got great big chippy chip right here. So if you want a candy dish that you don't care that the family chips it up and you want to actually stick candy in it, this is perfect for you. I'm with you. I love the shape. Little Hazel. I know. It's so fun. Little Hazel Atlas. And this one, because of that great big chip, it's only $6. $6, number seven. And those are my two. Okay, I hope I'm not fuzzy anymore. I hope I'm better. Fingers crossed. Okay. You look better to me. Okay, good. Hey, hey, hey Bridget. So up next, I have, and I love this one. I hit it. This Sometimes the sun benefits me, and this is one of the ways. Look at that. I uh -oh. love the colors in this. Now I'm not a, I'm a bit of a purist when it comes to carnival glass. I really like the antique stuff over the repop. This is Indiana. They repop this in the seventies, 
But I have to say, because of the color on this, the bubbles in the sun, I love this. So you get this really cool pastel -y, different colors, depending on how you tilt it. So we come in, it doesn't even have to be in the direct sunlight. I'm calling this kind of like a cabbage leaf. It's kind of what it reminds me of. So here's the back and it's more on the frosted matte side on the back and the front is very, very glossy. Just a great little serving plate or just a decorated, be oh, thank you, Kaz. I'm, I'm glad I'm so much better. 10 inches. So 10 inches across on this guy. And I thought with spring coming, this is just a fun piece. To, I mean, it looks like, oil in, in yeah yeah it looks like think, an oil slick yeah it there's just something about those pastel it has every look you get yellow blue and pink i just love the way it looks so if you're interested in this piece here oh that's cool i haven't seen a relish pool it's going to be ten dollars number 75 ten dollars number 75 and it's a nice piece of glass i think it's pretty cool. i like pretty glass all the glass is pretty Okay, next up, this is, John found me this piece. This is just a fun piece. I come across, I like the eye washes. I think they're really neat. Um, there's something about them that's a lot of fun. But this one here is an older piece. I don't know if I sort of focus in on that. I think I have it upside down too. Okay, so this is a, I'm gonna make sure I say this right. Whittle Tatum, Whithall, Whit, W-H-I-T, and then all. That's why I'm having a hard time saying that word, Tatum piece they were known for making glass insulators but they did make some pharmaceutical lines so this little piece here was done from the 20s to the 40s they're in about they're a new jersey company and this one is a clear glass piece so i know there are some people out there who collect them i think they're really really kind of neat and it's not every day you come across one with a big old stamp on the bottom so if you're looking and this one's not tall i've had other ones that are usually much taller this one here is, oh, two inches. So it's a teeny, teeny guy. So if you're interested in the teeny, teeny Whittle and Tatum eye wash, it's $8, number 89. $8, number 89 on that guy. And those are my two, and I'm glad I'm not fuzzy anymore. What were people doing back then that they needed so many eye washes? I don't know, but you know what? I have a, I have a daughter who has OCD, and I was showing it to her because I thought she'd think it was funny. And her boyfriend goes, "Oh my god, please do not give her anything else to clean. No more stuff that she has to clean." <laughs> okay, this I have two pieces. One I just got. One you've probably seen before. So they're both Briard serving bowls. So this one you've probably seen awesome. before because I've had it for a while. I love this this detail here on the bottom and it's interesting because i see these all the time with all of the design completely gone <laughs> but you can recognize it from the bowl so it does have george and then briard over there so george briard this is the size of this one and then i just picked up this one now oops, i dropped it the pattern is different but like they could still be used together because they're both Briards. They're both that same color. So here is the George Briard right there. This one would have had a fork, a little appetizer fork on a chain. So oh. it is missing its little appetizer fork. It has the same bottom right here. So it's shallower than the bowl. But how fun is that? Hey, Bonnie. So super fun set here. You'll get both for $12, number five. $12, number five. So if you're a George Briard fan, here are two serving bowls. I don't think I've ever had one of the platters. Glasses, yes. And then little serving dishes, yes. And then... I have now I only found one of these online and it listed as Indiana glass, but it didn't give any proof that it was Indiana glass. So I don't know. It is a very light amber. Oh, Jazz Dia, I see for that. Thank you very much. So it's a very light amber, but it's amber, not yellow. 
And this does make me think that it is probably Indiana glass, but it has got a lot of details. Yeah, it does. I love this view of it. So it's a nice little compote, comport fruit bowl. Holds grapefruit perfectly. And it is a nice size. So it stands five and a quarter inches tall, but it's eight inches across. So it's going to be $15, number eight. $15, number eight, amber fruit bowl, probably Indiana class, and probably from the 60s. And those are my two. I love that. I, I'm not a few, we know I'm not a big fan of the grape thing, but to use that to sit on your counter as a fruit bowl, I love that idea. Okay. And you're fuzzy again. Oh, good God. <laughs> I'm really, and we were making jokes the other night, John and I, about, oh, we shouldn't have any problems with the internet until all the snowbirds come back from Florida. Yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to try this again. All right. I have here some coke glasses catch the wave these are 1985 stained glass coca-cola glasses enjoy the coke there we go get in try to get in really close and move super super slow here i'm trying to take a little peek over there too they're in perfect condition all of the stained glass is still there of the transfer I remember these from back in the day, I have to say. So it is a set of two Coca-Cola glasses. And if you're interested, and these will hold a proper can or bottle of Coke. They're going to be $15, number 74. $15, number 74 for the set of Coca-Cola glasses. That's my first one. Okay. And then up next. So you guys, I hit kind of the Costa Boda mother load last week. So I'm kind of spacing out the pieces. So here's another one here. This igloo, I think that's what they call this one. Igloo, it still has its Costa Boda sticker right there. And I know I'm fuzzy, so you probably won't see it. Because I was fine the whole time Claudia was talking. <laughs> and I come to come on. And, All right. So it is the votive tea light holder. Costa Boda. It is the bigger one. I have a smaller one, so it is a good sized one there. It also has an extra sticker here on the bottom. This was a special, uh, let's see, let's see G and L Markella favors and gifts for all occasions. But it also has an extra, we got an extra little Costa Boda down there, as well as the sticker. So, I, what, oh, they're coming, Kaz. I, we had a storm roll through, so everybody's stuff went out. They're awesome. Three inches in height on this guy right here. And if you're interested in the Costa Boda piece, I love this like ice. It's going to be $12, number 87. $12, number 87 on that guy. And those are my two. I see Jazzy got number 74. Thank you, Jazzy. Sorry about the fuzziness, guys. I love the Costa Boda. Crazy yeah. Lamp Lady had found a Costa Boda base. Ooh. At a good goal, and I was like, oh, that's so cool. Love it, love it, love it. Oh. Okay. So, I have got the Mount Vernon. This was Indiana Glass. No chips on this one. It's got the finial. Nikki's had this one, too. Oh, I love this. But just wanted to, and remember, I got a super good deal on all of these. I bought them all as a lot. So mine's probably a little bit cheaper than Nikki's is. But very cool Indiana glass. This was the Mount Vernon. And this is what we're talking about when we're like, so many of these companies had a line called yeah. Mount Vernon. And this is metal up here with the finial top. And these look like very much like the Indiana glass um, fairy lamps too. They do. They remind me of pumpkins, though. Like if you put like orange mm -hmm. little fairy lights in there, you'd or they're they're yeah. so much fun. These candy dishes. This one's fifteen dollars, number four. <laughs> fifteen dollars, number four. 
And I know if you've seen the video, you've seen them all, but I just didn't, I wanted to give you guys a closer look at them just in case you're like, oh, I don't know, just because that was just a quick video when I went through everything back there. So this one is another one that's crystal. It's got scroll feet again, and I couldn't identify a maker on it. The top is amazing. Oh, yeah. Picture. And this one catches the light because of the, the etching and the cut into it catches the light so much better than the other crystal one but it has got a chip right here right here in front of my fingernail there is a chip on this this one's heavy the lid especially so beautiful beautiful detail on this one Ooh. but because of the chip and because i bought these all as a lot it's only eight dollars eight dollars number two you don't see the chip if it's turned to the back eight dollars number two on that one i love the top of that though it's like a pretty little rhythm oh i love it yeah okay Me i'm gonna move too. really slow again really slow again. sorry if i'm fuzzy i probably am so I brought this a while ago. I forget to bring it back. This is a piece of Viking, a blue neck. I still am not 100% certain what this was used for. I I find it very hard to believe that this would have, you would have wanted to pour anything out of here. I'm just saying. <laughs> I find it very hard to believe. But it's just, I don't know, just the, the lines of it are really kind of cool. It's just a neat piece to have out. I suppose it could you could use it to put like a ladle in and sit next to pieces. And that would be kind of neat, but I just, I can't pass up Blue Neek Viking when I come across, or any no, Viking, when I come across never. it. Because it's, well, I'm going to call it Blue Raspberry Viking, but that's what it is. In perfect condition, there's no condition issues with this at all. Really lovely shape. And if you're interested, it's $12, number 90. $12, number 90. Okay, and my last piece here is my last piece of the line of the elegant glassware. This is a piece of imperial glass, candle wick, heart-shaped clear glass bowl. Try to come in real slow there. You can see, there we go, the little dots of candle wick on the end. This is an excellent shape. It is a heart-shaped dish. I know we're a little past the month of February, but, you know, that doesn't mean chocolate never broke your heart. Put some chocolate in there. Chocolate ain't going to break your heart. So really excellent condition there on this little guy. He's not super big. I can hold him in the palm of my hand. And if you're interested in him, it's just going to be $10, number 73. $10, number 73 on this lovely piece. And that's my last one. All right. So somebody gifted me this. I cannot remember who gifted it to me. They purchased it from another reseller. They would had him send it to me. I have loved and appreciated it for the last year, but now it's time for it to move on. And it is the Jeanette Swan. And this was made to hold a lipstick. This part was a lipstick holder. This would have been a powder box. It's got this iridescence. It's Jeanette. Oh, I love it. It did all of these fun powder boxes. This one is the Marigold Iridescence. So no chips, no cracks that I can see. And, you know, it's this big. But super, super pretty. I don't have this color in my decor. I'm all pastels. Oh, see, you're getting it too. The little, but the little fun, uh, slick, shine, yeah. multicolor when you do that. I love it. Yep. It's so pretty. It is so pretty. if you're interested in the little Jeanette powder dish, I love, I actually had a vintage lipstick displayed on here until oh, I moved. Fun. It's going to be $15, number 14, $15, number 14. And somebody had asked me about it because it had been behind. I don't remember who asked me about it. I am sorry. If I had remembered, I would have offered it for you, offered it first, but at the time I wasn't selling it. Yeah, I I'm always on the look for more hunt for more of these because some of the figures that they did on top are more rare than others. I just I don't see them around here in this area. Okay, now my last item today is another piece of crystal. It does have 
tiny, tiny chips in two spots on the rim. It is missing its lid. The lid would have had a butterfly in flight that was the very top of it. So Ooh. it would have had a really cool lid to it. But it's crystal. It is super heavy. It has scroll feet as well. This one was um, made in Germany. I was able to identify that this one was made in Germany. So the um, glass here has been cut to give you this very cool look on the butterflies. And this is a good size, even without the lid. It's the biggest of all of them. It is four and a half inches tall and would make a really cool open candy dish for like Reese peanut butter eggs for Easter. That would look good in here. Uh, beans, that'd be a lot of jelly beans. Sorry. But because it is missing its lid, it is only going to be $10, number 17. And it is, it is stunning. And I'm sure the lid with the butterfly in flight broke. Because oh. you can just see that that would have been one of the things that would not have lasted. All right. That was all of mine. Did you want to show the, um, I don't know, because you're fuzzy again. No, I'm so fuzzy. <laughs> it, it's not, it, nothing's going to work unless we take down the internet and load it back up again. It's the only thing that's going to work. And it's really annoying. What it is. I'm glad mine cleared up and didn't stay fuzzy. Uh, yeah. I'm lucky fine this time of day because mom and dad are both usually napping and the girls are not here. They're at college and the other one's at work. So uh, <laughs> I know it's pulling ever, on my internet. Do you need a broom? Why do I need? No, I don't need a broom. I dropped my magnifying glass onto, ooh, that was kind of neat, onto some glass. No, everything's fine. Nothing broke. So sorry about the loud noise. <laughs> That's why he's asking me if I need it. At first, I was like, why would I need a broom? John's always willing to help. So yes, don't no, forget no. that if you have glass questions, glass company, glass, whatever, no question is stupid. If you don't know the answer, nope. we would like to teach you. So make sure you let us know if you have any glass questions. And if you've sent me a Nikki questions, we do have them. We've saved them all. And we will be discussing <laughs> them next week. I thought you spelled it. The job. jelly bean that I like <laughs> Now I want jelly beans. And I have my regular Wednesday morning coffee chat and a small sale. And then Thursday is my Thursday to be on with Tiger. I'll be on Tiger's channel, Ooh. 11 a.m. Eastern. And I got some new goodies for that. I'm excited. And what oh, do you have going on? So this Thursday, I'm going to be over on Whatnot. I'm going to be doing ceramics and pottery. Yes, some of them are really big, awesome pieces. Some of them are smaller pieces. A very vast variety of things. So make sure you tune in and check that out. Um, I think I've got some Mexican pottery, although not a lot of Mexican pottery. Some stangle, just lots of different fun little pieces. So I'm still laughing about the jelly bean comment. That's what I got going on this week <laughs> on Thursday. Every Thursday I'm on whatnot, 7 p.m. Eastern. And if you need the tomorrow. link, it is down below. It is linked down there and then you can go, you can download the whatnot app. If you haven't done that yet, create a buyer account and then you can follow Nikki. And yeah. if you turn on notifications, it'll let you know when she's on and when she's selling. And a lot of our friends are over there on whatnot now. So yeah, a lot it's more of the YouTube sellers are over there selling over on whatnot and not selling as much on YouTube, but selling a lot more over on what it's just, I don't know. It's a easier. It's a little bit of an easier format sometimes. Thank Some, you, not all Amy. the time. Oh, all thank right. you. That's all I've got. Yes. Thanks for it. hanging out with us today, you guys. Better internet oh. next week. We'll see you in the chats. Bye, Bye guys. Bye. Bye.